Hello, this is Lance Drake with WCI Consulting. Uh, today we're going to go over SAP Data Services Designer. This is just going to be your basic overview of it. A little bit background behind data services is that it's SAP's ETL tool. It's database driven, so you're going to have repos on a database server that you'll log into. All that is, is controlled inside the CMC. You I've probably seen that in one of our previous examples dealing with the CMC. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is go, go over the high-level overview of what you actually get with this tool, some of the powers behind it, and go on from there. So once you log in into Data Services, this is the splash screen that you see. Right away, you have the ability to open up a project. You can go ahead and create a new project. You can create a data store. A data store is going to be a connection to a source location or a target location. You can import from, from files, whether the CSV, XML, pipe, pipe limited. There's a lot of options that you have there. It can, it can pretty much cover just about any format that, that you need to actually cover or import. You also have your central repositories. This is its version of source safe where you can check code in and out to where you can migrate in between repositories or actually have a backup of, of some code. So let's say that you were developing and halfway through you discovered that your business logic was, was wrong or needed to be changed and you just need to roll it back. Well, with the central repository, if you had already checked your previous code in, you can now go get your latest version and pull it back down. And you have your management console. The, the management console actually deals with your scheduling and your administrative work of what, your, of what you do with your re repositories while on the other side the designer is your development tool on what you do with your code and applying all your business logic when you're pulling data from your source and giving it to to your target and then down here is just a couple of quick links to some SAP PDF documents and you'll see down here at the bottom you can see the most recent objects projects that I opened up and when they're last opened up Right away, you can go ahead and see that this is this is your design area, this is your project area, and your local object library area. Now, as you recall earlier, I said this was database driven, meaning all the code is stored inside a database, and, and there's two different types. You you have your local repository and your central. Your local again is is where you do all all your development, and then your central is as we went over previously is where you actually house all all your code. And when you want to migrate something or you want to pull something back down because you need you you made a mistake, or you just want a, a most recent version of it. Up here at the top is your menu bar. It's very similar to all your Windows tools. You have your new project, batch job, real time job. The uh, difference between a batch job and a real-time job is that a batch job actually is something that you schedule. You can call it via, via web service, but typically they are used for scheduling jobs of moving data from one to the other. Then you have your real-time job, which allows you to call it in real time. Think of a ordering system. Someone calls in. They want to find out the status of a current package that they purchased, and when they expect it to be person calls in, you actually give them the order number, they submit it into a custom application. Once that is submitted, it makes a call to a real-time job, passes the order number with it, the ETL job goes out, performs additional business logic, maybe it queries a database, it has, it has to do other things, and then it has returning data going back to the calling application. So with a real-time job, you're going to have a message being sent and a message being returned to the calling application. You have your workflows, which is the next level down. It helps organize all your source target movement, it helps define a lot of your business logic. Your data flow, this is where all the meat happens. This is where you actually pull data out of your source, define business logic, and then load actual targets. ABAP data flows are used in terms of connecting to SAP. They execute ABAP code. Your transform, this is where you, you perform all, all of your business logic. Your data stores, this is where you actually define your source and your target. You also have your flat files, your Hadoops, your DTDs, your XML schemas, COBOL, Excel, and lastly, you can actually create your own custom function. Data services has out-of-the-box functions, but if something doesn't facilitate what you're trying to do, Maybe it's an exchange rate function. You can go ahead and create your own custom code and call this function 
as you're implementing your ETL process. Then of course you can open a project just like previously before and you can delete them, close them, save, print, so on. Edit buttons, same thing. Pretty much add the box, undo, cut, copy, paste. You can view specific toolbars by default layouts. You have different tools with this option. You can go to your object library, your project area, variables. The tool also deals with variables just like a programming language. You, you, you can have your global, your local, or parameters used throughout this entire process. Output, custom functions, system configurations, which are different settings that you can set on your local repo. Substitution parameters, profiler, export, import. This, this allows you to actually import ETL code into it or you can export out to pass it as a file backup. Your central repos we went over earlier, your options, and then your management console. Then you, you, you also have your debug function, start, stop. This, this will actually let you step through the process. So when I execute a job, now I can step through, if, if necessary, each step of the way, record by record, until I find out what is going going wrong with a, a particular ETL process that, that I have going on. You can set your breakpoints. A lot of this stuff we, we will go over in additional videos, but for right now we'll just go over a, a high view of it. And then your windows, just your particular view on cascade, tile, vertical, and then your help functions. As mentioned earlier, you, you have your designer, your project area, which consists of your designer, your monitor, and your log. What you'll need to do in order to see all this stuff is drag and drop your, your project from your local object library up here. And if you had jobs in here, you would be able to see them. You can have your, your monitor window. What this does is when you execute a job, you can actually look at it in real time. And then also you have logs for any jobs executed. Your local object library consists of a project, which is at the basic terms just a folder which allows you to organize your jobs in a way for you to be able to schedule them and, and view them in groups, knowing which jobs go to specific tasks you're wanting to do. Maybe you have marketing load, then you have a marketing folder, a sales, sales loads, then you have your sales folder. And now you also have your batch jobs and your real-time jobs. This is, again, this is what you would schedule or you would call into your process and it actually allows you to perform that ETL process and define all that business logic and execute them. So when you have all your multiple sources, you can now consolidate them down into one data warehouse or data source that you can report off of. Workflows are just an organization of all your different workflows or your data flows. And then your data flows, which I mentioned earlier, you're just your, your, your basic start to finish and then your ABAP code transforms, which will allow you to pull data out of SAP Oracle functions or actually execute ABAP code. Here you will see that these are the transforms. What, what a transform is, is it, it's an out-of-the-box function that does a lot of the heavy lifting for you or a, a lot of the work, takes a lot of the work out of the picture for you. You'll see here it's, it's broken up into data integrator, data quality, platform, and text processing. Data integrator is your ETL piece. It moves data from, from start to finish. Your data quality is a step layer. It, it is a step further. It actually does data governance on your data. You can actually perform matching, address cleansing, data cleansing, so forth. Platforms that, that, that are used in between both areas, both the data integrator and data quality. And then your text data processing actually allows you to determine patterns within unstructured text. Maybe you are, are, are trying to find specific sentiment, whether it's good or bad, within Word documents that are unstructured. They are not in a CSV format, in, in, in any format period. You can now use these algorithms that they have to determine good or bad things that, that maybe customers are saying to you in emails or flat files that you already currently have out on, on your system. Some of the powers behind data integrator is the data transform. Data transfer allows you to push data back down to, to, to the database. The way data services works is it will pull data out of the database and start manipulating the data the way that you want it. 
if for some reason you need to push it back down to the data inserts or updates, this function allows you to push any record sets that have already had business logic applied to it back down to the database to where it can be joined up against other tables that are currently in the database and pull that back up in, into memory for you so it can start processing things faster. The date generation is just a date transform function. It just generates dates for you. Effective date is the same thing. It just, it just generates one effective date. Hierarchy flattening, it takes parent-child relationships and flattens it out for you. History preserving, it allows you to keep historical records inside your target database without having to apply all that complex logic to it. It actually does it for you. It will turn your insert statements into update statements and append a new insert on top of it. So you're keeping that previous record inside the database, allowing you to look back into history if there's ever a question on when a, a, a particular record changed or what the previous value was when it did change. Your key generation, this allows you to incrementally generate key numbers for your database. Your CDC map operation, databases are now coming out with change data ca capture. What this does is it knows about the rules based upon the change data capture and automatically applies that logic to generate the insert, update, and, and delete statements necessary without having to determine does the record already exist, is this going to be an insert, is this going to be an update. Pivot table turns rows to columns, reverse pivot turns columns to rows. Table comparison, this will allow you to compare records coming in to your ETL process against the database, determine if this record already exists, if there's any changes in it, or if the record doesn't exist, or, or if it's a new record. And what that does is if it's a new record, it's going to create an insert statement. If it's an existing record, it's going to create a update statement. If nothing has changed between the two records, it will discard that, that record and not perform any transaction, or it will delete a record if you inform it to actually delete a record. XML pipeline, this will actually read XML files and unnest them for you so you can import them into your database or target system. Data quality, as, as we mentioned, before it's, it's going to, to do your address cleansing. It can do global, it can do US regulatory, it can do country, it can also do a, a geocoder giving you the lat and longs. You also have your match processes which is fuzzy logic to, to determine which records could potentially match against another record, therefore reducing any duplicates and improving your, your, your data governance. You also have your associate transform, which is using with the match transformers, as I just discussed. If you have multiple match operations, you can now determine out of both these match groups, which ones do these two match with. You have your platforms, which can be used in both the data integrator and the data quality. You have your case statement, which works just like any other case statement. It'll allow you to, to take records and put them in different paths. So if you have different business logic required for specific instances, you can actually send them down that path and apply those additional business logic to it. Your map operation, this actually allows you to manipulate how you want the record to be treated on, on the database side, meaning you can turn inserts into updates or updates into deletes and vice versa. You also have your merge, which works like a union in terms of database, it allows you to take multiple result sets and append them to the bottom of each other. You have your query transform which does your business logic period, your if statements, your group buys, your order buys, your, your, your mappings from source to target. You have a row generation which will allow you to automatically give each row a number. And you can also execute your own SQL statements. Some people have, have already developed their own code. They don't want to have to recreate the will. You can use the, if, if that wheel has, has already been created inside SQL code, you can now copy and paste that inside data services and you can execute that, that code, helping to reduce some of your development time. Validation tra transforms, this will validate records as they come across and depending upon whether or not they pass this, this validation. Maybe you're looking for a specific length and character. If it passes this validation, let's go ahead and push it one path. If not, let's go ahead 
inform logic on it and have it go a, a different path. XML map, those are XML, so it helps unnest that as well. Text data processing allows you to take unstructured data and review that data and determine what is important out of this unstructured data. As we discussed previously, maybe sentiment is something that's important to you. You can now look at unstructured data and pull those good and bad comments out, let you know what they are, how good they are, how bad they are, and let you keep track of that. This is, it's, it's really good for a marketing tool. Now your data stores. Your data stores can be a source or a target. It can be a database. It can be an, an adapter, a JDE One World, Oracle, PeopleSoft, SAP applications, BW, Siebel, or it can just be a simple web service call that, that you go out and call and then pull information back into your source system. I'll go ahead and select database, the different types of databases you have. You can see here there is quite a number of them. You can have a, a Data Federator, which is SAP product, DB2, HP NeoView, Informix, Memory. These are all just different sources that are out of the box supported by the platform. And from there you can go ahead and connect to it directly and directly pull, pull the information out or directly write to that information. Then again, as, as discussed earlier, you have your flat files, you, you have Hadoop, you have your DDTs, which work with your XML schemas, you have your COBOL, and you have your Excel workbooks. And then as I mentioned previously, you have your custom functions, and from here you can also create new functions if something does not facilitate your needs. You just go ahead and go ahead and call it new function, or whatever your function name is going to be. And now I have an area where I can apply business logic and you can pass in variables, you can pass in parameters, you can use some of your re repository pr parameters and now I also have a whole list of functions that, that are out of the box that I can apply as well. A lot of these functions are going to be your basic functions that, that you find your database level, your string functions, your concatenations, your links, there's a whole list of them that SAP does support. And from there, this is your basic overview of what comes with SAP Data Services ETL product. You can call real-time jobs, you can schedule jobs, you use this tool as pulling data information from multiple sources, loading into one target, so you can actually view this data in one place, making it a lot easier for your end users to, to understand what they're trying to get the answers from.